Thanks, Chanel. Hi, guys. Happy Friday. Just going to hit my buttons here. And um, today we have a really fun class that um, it's kind of like a, it could, you could consider it an intro to right angle weave. If that's a new stitch for you, this is going to be a great class because we're going to show the structure of making four beads a, into a segment and then adding segments to create a really cool heart shape. And so the theme of today's class is these little Valentine hearts. I'll hold one up for you guys. And you can really make this your own. So um, earlier today, I was feeling creative. And just to kind of get a warm up, I made a pair that was like hot pink with black. How cool an 80s looking is that? It was like, yeah, this is awesome. So you can make anything with these. You can also put them together. Um, here's the necklace that you probably saw in the photos and the handout. And you can put any chain you want. And we're just going to show in class how these right angle weave, like, you know, segments can be built on each other to make shapes and to join. Um, I was thinking even like bracelets, you could do so much with this. So um, I'll go ahead and we'll switch to the mat really quick and I will show you all the details up close. Thanks, Janelle. Okay, and so here's an up close view of the necklace. And here's the earring. And they're made the same way. So you start with creating the heart and we'll go through that. It's just a series of, you basically make a three segments and then you build the top and the bottom on those segments. It goes pretty fast. Then if you want to, you can take the edge beads. So you see like the edge beads here and you can make another right angle weave segment just using 11 O seed beads and use those as a way to join. So you can picture how you know, you're not limited to do what I've got here. Like you could link them here. You could link them on the top like I did for the earring. And the other cool thing is, is if you're using uh, the same beads I am, which are these uh, 11F, you'll be able to get a jump ring through it. These are four millimeter jump rings and we have them in here, here in the gold, but um, there's also in sterling silver and stainless steel. So for example, they come in silver too. So if you want to match your chain, if you're feeling silver that day, the earrings that I'm wearing that I made earlier used a 11-0 in this kind of like fuchsia pink. And then I just went with the jet. So I thought that was really cool. And again, those are the stainless steel four millimeter. And the chain that I'm using is paperclip chain. And it's a new chain they have in store at Michael's. And it's in gold. And then here's my silver pack. And I made it with, I think it comes in rose gold too, but these were the colors I stuck with. And I use that on this one here. Okay, and then for the other components you might need. Um, so ear wires in, you know, whatever color you'd like. And then the chain that I used here is a little smaller. And I wanted to give you a heads up that the chain in the handout, you have some options. So... This one is a little thinner. Um, this one is a little thicker. And if you can't find this chain, because this chain was in store, um, and I noticed that the links for this chain were a little harder to find online. Um, I did find it in store. We just have to go over to the beading section and the kids section, and it's the same chain. So if you're struggling to find this chain and you really like the one I used here, I was there literally like this week, and this chain is right over there. So. Um, it's not in the handout, so I'm just going to quickly tell you what the numbers are on it. You'll want to type in 10683988. So that one. Or you can just search creatology, creatology chain. And it's literally like the same stuff that I used. So yeah. Um, I think that's everything except for, I haven't talked about the actual crystals. So um, I used a cyan color. Sorry, I used the darker red. So this one is the, the dark Siam AB. Now there's also a light Siam. It's a little easier to see, and I think that's what I'm gonna work with today. But you can see the differences are really pretty. You could go with any colors you want. These are four millimeter in size. And then of course I showed the, the seed beads, but I'm using an 11 IO seed bead. Okay, so that's the beads. And then you're gonna need some thread and a needle. So I'm using a Wildfire 0.06 size. And I'm using a size 11 beading needle. And let's see what else. Um, so we've got our crystals. 
I'm going to push these findings aside for later. So for now, what we're going to need are we're going to need the crystals and we're going to need our seed beads at the end. So um, thread, we're going to need to cut the thread. So some scissors for that. And um, for the length to cut. Um, in the handout, I said about 30 inches, just to give you, you know, ability to weave in. And especially if you think you might want to do some connecting, you can use your tails to do your connecting if you're going to make something that's bigger than one heart. So something to think about when you're choosing how much thread to cut. So 30 inches will do it. Um, but if you think you might need more, then go ahead and just cut a little more. There you go. All right, and if you have handy some chain nose pliers, um, it'll help you thread your needle if you flatten the end of it, just a little bit. It usually makes it a lot easier to get those needles threaded. So bring down about like five, five inches or so and fold it over. And then in the handout, is a step-by-step -step diagram. And we're just gonna go through it step-by-step. -step. So we'll start by making one right angle weave segment. So it's just four crystals and you just stitch them together by going back through the first bead. So we're just gonna need four of these. There's one. And we're gonna bring those down to give yourself a, depending, like I said, depending on what you're planning to do. But if you're just making the earring, give yourself at least seven inches of tail just so you have something to weave in. So from where your last bead is here, you wanna measure seven inches in this direction. And if you've got that much tail, then you're good. So I've got about that much. You can see my, my tails right here. And then this is the working side. You wanna come around and go back through the first bead that you strung and head through that bead in the direction that the tail's exiting. So just like that. And then I like to just kind of pinch the spot on my tail where the seven inch mark was roughly so it doesn't lose its place when I do this next part, pulling all the beads through. But if you've done it right, you'll start getting a loop, 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 and it'll just pop right into a really nice square. It's really fun. <laughs> And it just goes right in shape. So um, we're going to weave to exit from the bead that's over here. So we're exiting over here right now. I'm going to go through the bead above and the bead on the side. So there's this one. Okay. All right. And from here, we're going to need three more crystals. So every new segment now is going to share a crystal from a segment before. So the first one we use four, but on all the subsequent ads, we're going to be using three crystals as we build the heart. So here's three more. Oh, thanks, Wanda. Yeah, I've been working on the camera. I'm glad that you guys like it. So there's those three beads. And we're going to get those through the bead that um, we're exiting, but we're heading in the bead through the side that doesn't have the thread coming up. And the goal is just to nice, make a nice circle, right? And you'll know you got it right because those beads will pop right in that same little square shape right next to the one from before. So far, so good. All right. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I want to try to get over here to this bead on the side. We're going to add one more segment. So this design starts with three segments just going in a row from each other. So I went through the, the bottom bead there, and I'm going to go through the top bead, sorry, the side bead. OK, so let's get three more. And just pick them all up. And then just come around and go back through the bead that your thread's exiting, heading in the side the thread's not coming out. So you notice we're kind of, we're switching direction every time we do an add. Bottom to top, top to bottom. 
And so now we have three segments there. And so I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention in the beginning, if you guys have any questions, today we have David in the chat. And so he'll pop in and ask me uh, as we're going, if you guys have any questions. That's right. <laughs> hey, David. <laughs> Sorry, I meant, meant to mention that in the beginning. Oh, no worries. No worries. Do your thing. Cool. All right. And so exiting from, we just did this part and we just did this part. And now we're going to try to, from here, add the next section. So now we're, we're going somewhere different. We're going to head to the bottom of the heart and add the bottom. And so to get there, we want to be exiting from this bead here, which is the middle of these. So, so far we've just built that, right? So we're going to travel around a little bit to add this one. And so you just got to take a look where, where you are. And so right now I'm coming out of this bead here and I'm just going to travel. And the one thing I forgot to mention also about this stitch, you'll notice when I did these three ads, I didn't go around and reinforce them like I normally would have. For those of you who've taken other right angle weave classes with me, normally we would weave around and reinforce and go through them all again. I didn't do that because this um, pattern is diagrammed to be self-reinforcing. And so as you do the ads, you get the benefit of reinforcing each of these segments along the way. So kind of cool. If you're following the stitch diagram, you'll get that little bonus. There's more than one way to do these um, parts as far as like the stitch path. You'll still get there in the end if you go and just make sure you're exiting, for example, like from this same bead. Um, but if you are um, interested in not having to do a bunch of extra swirling around and you follow what's written in the, you know, these paths here, you'll get there. So we're exiting from this bead here. And we're just going to add three beads to the bottom. So just three every time. Here's those three. All right. And just come along through. Again, we're, we're doing the same thing we've been doing. We're going back to the bead that our thread's exiting. We're heading through that bead in the side the thread's not coming out. And when you do that, those three beads pop right on the bottom. So now we've got the bottom of our heart all set. All right. And so I'm just going to do the next step of weaving around. And now my goal is to get to the top right side. And so I need to go up through the bead in the middle. And then I'm going to turn right and head through the bead in the top. Okay, so three more beads. See how fast, this is a really nice fast design. So there's three there. And we'll come around and go back through the bead that we're exiting. And again, heading in the direction that we don't have threads sticking out. I'm just gonna help that one pop into place there. All right, so we've got almost done. Um, I need to get over here. So this is gonna be a little more weaving around. And just head up through the side. And then through this one. And down through the next one. All right, and then when we get over here, we're not exactly where we wanna be yet. We have to go because we don't want to go just straight across from here. It can be tempting to do that, but it would create a um, visible thread jumping from one bead to the other. So you want to go in a circle, a circle around this way. And here we get the opportunity to reinforce this edge side. So see, we just went down this way, this way, this way, and we're just gonna make a little circle through here to exit from the top left-hand side top bead of that 
first little segment we made. And we're almost done. We just need three more beads. There's those three. And just taking a quick look at where we are here, we're going to go back through that bead from the opposite side so we get a circle. And there's a heart. All set. So all we have left to do now is to create um, a border. And so this, this part's kind of optional, but it does have a stabilizing effect on the heart itself. So if you want to add that, you want to come up through. Right now we're exiting from that top bead of that first segment we made. Come up through the bead that's just a, to the right and above. So that one there. And now we need our size 11s. And what we're going to do next is put a size 11 in the spaces around. Which gives the heart like a lot of definition, makes it pop. And I'm using metallic gold. All right, and so it's just one bead per. So we're going to pick up one bead. And then just go through the next bicone. Here's another one. And so this is just putting another a bead in between every bicone as we go around. To the next one. See how cool that looks? It really does make it, it totally takes the shape of a heart at that point. It was super, super fun. All right, and then when you get to this spot right here, you'll notice we're, we're headed in this direction through the bead. So we're not gonna put another 11-0 there. We're just gonna make a turn and come down through the next bead that's headed this way. And now we'll start adding the uh, 11 O's again. Go through the bottom bicone here. And then get one more. I mean, it just pops, it's really fun. So here you'll find yourself in a spot where you don't really wanna add a bead that's kind of in the middle of the work, right? So we're just trying to border it. So just go ahead and keep going through the next uh, outer bead. And we'll get another 11 0. There's one more. One more, and then we just need one more bead. All right, so in a nutshell, that's the heart. So where to take it from here? Um, you can weave in all these ends and then pop an ear wire on using a jump ring and a chain. So that's definitely one method. And how that looks is right here, let me show you. Trying to align them with each other. So it's this one here that you, you would use if you wanted it to kind of hang like that, which is a really fun way to hang the heart. But you're not stuck with that. You can do pretty much anything you want. So um, what I was going to do is maybe set this one aside, and then we'll go through it one more time, just so everybody can see making it two times. And we're doing great for time, so we'll have time to do that. And then um, I can show both how to suspend it, and maybe we could experiment with adding the segments to connect them. So let's see, I'm going to set this one aside. And right now what I've got right here is just both tails just left. And let's see, Marguerite has a question. How much weaving in do you want to do? So to make it secure, um, what you'll do is, yeah, let's go ahead and weave this one in. We'll make this the earring. So we'll just have like a one swoop one on this one. From here, you'd want to make at least three or four turns. And the bicones, because bicones can tend to be, um, um, they're not 
they have a very generous internal hole diameter. So they're not going to hold the thread in like a seed bead would with multiple passes where the kind of the friction of the thread against itself gives you some advantage. Here you're going to want to do a little extra. So it's a great question because it, it is a, something a little different. But something you can do is you can use these beads we've added on the side, the 11 O's, as um, things to go through to give it just a little more weaving in. So um, the path is kind of up to you, just as long as you're making the same right angle weave thread path. So just keep going through here. We'll just keep going. And this is another uh, chance to fix something. So like, say you were working on this and you thought, hey, the, um, this spot's a little loose, so I want to tighten that up. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Thanks, Sharon. My hands went off the camera there. Okay. I'm more likely to do that when I'm doing my weaving in for sure. She's got okay. in the zone there. I got in the zone. I did. I did. But see, we're just kind of going around. So I could I could trim this here, and that would be good. Um, and then I would want to do the same thing with my tail. So let's go ahead and let's actually go ahead and do that. So here's I'm pushing down and pulling up to make that thread pop back into the bead. So there's one side, and if we want to get rid of the tail, just really quick. So apparently Wanda is not much of a bead weaver. She asked, could you add a picket edge to look like the heart has a lace edge? Oh, you mean like kind of connect the 11 -0? Is that That would be neat. I think so. I mean, yeah, so the cool thing about writing a weave is every single one of these little edges, including the seed beads, can become a segment. Like a new <laughs> You guys are funny. Yeah, I said that wrong, didn't I? <laughs> I think I know what you mean though. A pico edge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um see I I I, I totally knew what you meant and I didn't even hear it <laughs> until I saw the chat and I'm like, oh yeah. I said that very smoothly, so you couldn't tell I spelled that wrong. Well, I wasn't sure if you meant like a fence maybe going around. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah absolutely you can totally do that you can add anything you want to these it's it, that's what's so fun about this stitch is it gives you um no limits in space right you can build also 3d stuff right like if you wanted you could layer this heart to layers thick by just repeating everything here with connecting it, it's just it's kind of a rabbit hole to go down this is a stitch can really um occupy your mind that's why it's a favorite for a lot of folks but I'm just going to make this one the super simple one. I'm just going to weave this in. And for some reason, I've made this connection with um, jewelry sales and simplicity. I don't know what it is, but the harder I work on something, the more time, the more elaborate complexity that I add, the less likely it is that it's actually going to sell at my shop. <laughs> and I don't know if that would hold true today as it did in the past, but I noticed that the simple little things your everyday stuff, the stuff that you feel like putting on is that simple, easy, um, kind of, I wouldn't say minimalist. I wouldn't call this minimalist in any way, but um, just to give you an example, like I really love these ones that I made. These are like my favorite earring this month. I've been wearing them a lot. And so um, I wore the red ones on Valentine's day and these ones I just made today. So I can tell I'm going to be wearing these. Can you use fire polish beads? Um, yeah, yeah, you could use fire polish and be fine. The bicones kind of pop into place in a way that is more um, structured. So like beginners are going to find that making making them with bicones is going to help you get started. But if you're experienced and you want to try round beads, round beads don't do what you want 100% of the time as readily as a bicone. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make the earring really quick just so we can have everything done and then we'll start over with another one. So these little teeny teeny jump rings are four millimeter jump rings and I'm just finding the seam on it. I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna pick a corner and go through, let's pick this corner. 
And I just chose these because I liked the way it looked suspended kind of catty corner like that, but you don't have to. You can connect them anywhere you want. All right, and I forgot to put the chain on it. I just put the little uh, jump ring through. But let's go ahead and grab my chain. Um, got this one open. Oh, I wanna show you guys a trick for getting your chain the same length. So let me do that really quick. Um, what color is the dark heart? The dark one is a dark cyan, and this oh. one is like a light cyan. So let me go ahead and grab those strands really quick so I can show you both side by side. So if you see them on the wall at Michael's, they're going to look like that. And these are the AB finish. They also come without the AB on them. Oh, Cynthia, she says that her jump ring broke her bead. I'm so sorry. Gosh. Aww. That's unlucky. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um. Well, you know, the good news is you can weave, weave through and add another jump ring. Because if you remember when we constructed these, there was thread going from bicone to bicone before. We just br bring it, bring a new strand in maybe and... Um, a little extra work there, but ah. um, so let me get you the color. So light cyan and dark cyan, depending what you like. I just grabbed the light because I I felt like it was easier um, to see. Um, but they all kind of look when we get them next to each other. It's kind of hard to see them apart, right? I wonder if I should work with different colors. I might try that for the next one. But so if you want to make your chain the same length. Just kind of figure out your first one. You just got to kind of eyeball and say, oh, well, I want it to be, I don't know, about the same as that one. So I'm just going to cut it right about there. And then to get my second one to match, take your beading needle and poke it through the chain link one and then the chain link number two and suspend those. And you'll get the spot where you need to cut. So a newbie can... asks, sorry to interrupt, but a oh. newbie asks, how do you make a jump ring flat and secure? So what you want to do for your jump rings is when you get them in a pack, they're going to be already in a really good shape, but you need to open it and close it, right? So in order to do that, you got to use something that holds one side of the jump ring. And I'm a fan of square chain nose pliers. They have a little bit of a square shape because they hold most of that circle on the side. And when you open it, you want to use a lateral motion. So I will use, typically, I like to use a bent nose plier because what I can do with a bent nose plier is I can come along and get the other side like that. So now I've got the seam here at the top isolated and I've got both sides kind of held together as a nice circle but you don't want to pull apart what you want to do is do a bend so your wrist is doing this to open up the jump ring without losing your your nice circle so you see I still have my nice circle but I used a lateral motion to open it up and then when I attach it and close it back up I use that same lateral motion in reverse. Let's bring it right back together. And if you get that little click, that's awesome. It means that you've made contact with the other side. And you can do this with this thing I'm doing here where I'm wiggling it. It's like a wiggle work harden. And sometimes after it's closed, I'll come along with the pliers and just do that. And so you still have your circle. So hopefully that helped. It takes a little practice and trying it with a larger jump ring when you're when you're learning. Yeah, don't want to say don't pull them apart. You want to twist. See, once you pull them apart, the jump ring is kind of useless. You got to get a new one. Um, so we've got a chain. And actually, I get to show you jump ring one more time because I closed this one without putting my chain on. So I'm, again, I'm finding the seam. It can be really hard to see, but if you guys can spot it, you see right there? I closed it really well, so it's hard to see. And again, I've got the bent nose pliers. So I'm gonna open that up. There's that, that lateral motion again. 
and then grab one of my chains. And we'll get that on there. And so it suspends just really nicely there. And you can grab your ear wires. And I just went straight from the chain to the ear wire. I didn't um, add another jump ring because you can open these ear wires. And on the, the um, bead landing ear wires, this is true for the 18 karat gold plated. It's also true for uh, the stainless. And there's also some sterling silver. And on all of those, if you bring your pliers to the inside of the ear wire, the seam is on the side that the hook's pointing. It's right over here. They're all in that same spot. So all you got to do is just open it right up. Same lateral motion we use for our jump ring. And you can bring that chain right onto the end. Sometimes the little decorative ball gets in the way, so just kind of hold it. And once you feel good about where that is, just close it back up. It's that seam motion. And the cool thing about the decoration is it covers up the, the seam there. It's kind of cool. Does the plating last on these? Yeah. Oh, especially on these. The chain, I've used a lot of different kinds of chains, so the answer might differ between chains, but depending mm. on, I've never um, had a, any plating issues with mine. But yeah, so there's your earring. Um, let's go ahead and make another heart. Uh, we've got lots and lots of time. And so then we can show connecting one to another one. And I have maybe almost enough to complete another one here, but I might need more. So if I do, we'll, we'll grab that. But again, I'm going to cut 30 inches of thread. So let's go back to... Are all of the ear wires hypoallergenic? Um, they are, yeah. The, the precious metal plated, and especially the stainless, which are kind of my favorite. Yeah. It used to be called surgical steel. I remember when I first got my ears done, the surgical steel was what they used. I'm just flattening the end with pliers again so I can thread my needle just a little bit easier. And again, I'm just bringing that down. It'll be about five inches or so. And then we'll we'll just fold that over. And let's go back to the first page of our handout and create our first row. So to create our first row, we're just going to make a segment and then build two segments onto that segment. So we'll need four to start. Oop, he's jumping off. Two, three, and... And slide that down, leave about a seven inch tail. And then you want to come back through the first bead that we added. And you'll get that really cool looking square. Yeah. And so from here, I'm going to treat this as my edge. And the reason I'm leaving it over here is just, you know, it's it's handy to have it on the edge. If it was in the middle of the work, you'd have to weave it to the edge if you wanted to use the tail for something. So just keeping the tail on the side, I'm going to weave through here and here just to get to this one. So there's one. And the next one. Let's get three more. And then just taking a look back what, where we started, we're going to go back through the bead we're exiting, um, coming through the opposite side of our exiting thread. So we get a nice circle. And it just pops right into place. And I was just thinking out loud, I might use the frost wildfire with the lights I am, because you can really see. I feel like you can see the thread through it a little bit. 
it doesn't bug me, but just in case you you want it not to show more, it may, frost might be better. And so I've just uh, weaving to exit from the next side. So that's kind of our mantra as we add three and then weave to exit to the right. We've got one, two, three beads here. And again, we're going to go back through the one we're exiting, just heading in the side that doesn't have threads. Yeah, and Wanda's saying in the chat, she loves the way the bicones just snap into place. Yeah, me too. That's why I like working with a bicone. It's really fun. So um, from here, I'm just going to weave around. And just like we did before, our goal is to get to the middle bead down here so we can put the bottom of the heart on. So we just need to travel around. Oops. And this all serves to reinforce, which is really good for design. All right. So now we're, we're right where we want to be, exiting from that, that middle bead, and we'll just put the bottom of the heart on. And I'm going to run low on beads here really quick, so let's grab them. Just a little bit more. When you're working with these cards, if you want to save one of the strands that's on it, you can just come up underneath and just cut off one side. And that will, you know, you'll have the part number handy if you want to order more, for example. So there's that. I'll get that one later. All right, so here's one, two, there's three. So exiting from that bottom bicone that's in the middle, we're going to go back through it. Just go in the direction that thread's not exiting from. And there we go. So now we're just going to head over here. We want to be exiting from, from that bead. So to get there, I'm just going to go up through, up through this bead here, and then over through this bead. And let me show you in the handout that path. It's a little easier to see in the handout. But we just went up this way. And now we're just going to add the top here. Three more. There's those. And make a loop around and go through that same bead. And so almost done with our heart. It's got like just one more section to go. And I'm going to go up through the speed. Now I'm just traveling, right? We're just weaving around. And down. Through just this one. And it can be so tempting to go over here. We don't we don't want to cross the intersection then, right? With the the um preserving that circle path means we want to go go this way, right? And then we'll come around. And then that gives us a chance to reinforce this edge. So that little segment has not been reinforced yet. I'm going to travel across our tail. Whenever I meet the tail, I just have a chance to tighten things up. And then right where we want to be, right here. Susan asks over here, do you do you all spray your metallic beads with some kind of fixative? I've noticed some loss of finish on metallic beads on bracelets I've made. They're exposed to water, of course. Yeah, it depends on the bead. And I don't personally use a fixative on mine. Um, I also don't I usually get them wet, though. I try not to get my CV design wet. But if that's something that, like, if you want to be able to wear it in the shower and stuff, investing in maybe a Duracoat finish bead that are designed for that kind of wear would be the way to go. But so here's the three beads. 
Got to put more money into waterproof beads. <laughs> yeah, I just, I've never had a problem with them for me personally, but I do hear that they, they can have that issue. All right, and there's our heart. So quick, right? It's, it's really satisfying design. So um, from here, let's add our 11 O's. And then we'll, we'll experiment with connecting. How would you make the heart like one size bigger? Um, so if you want to make it one size bigger, it needs a center point. So you need an odd count for the starting row. So we did our starting row with three, decided to make this our center. You would need to expand it out to five, and then you would have to have um, decreasing rows because you won't have an automatic point. You'd have to decrease down right at the bottom. So it's a different pattern entirely. It would um, have, you can't just add one row, right? It, it, if you increase this out, you have to increase it in an odd count, and then you're gonna have another row, another row, and then your tops, another row here, and then your bottom. So it's orders of magnitude every time you add. Um, you can make it really, really big if you want. There's no rules, but definitely would use a lot of crystals at some point. And so I've got one eleven O. Oh, Sharon says use a six millimeter bead. Well, there, that's the easy way to do it. I I never would have thought of that either. So thank you, Sharon. <laughs> that's way better. Yeah, we have a lot of beautiful six millimeter bicones. And that would be a really great, actually, it would have been a great way to demo it, come to think of it. Then oh, if you do that and you want to do this border though, you probably need to switch to an 80 seed bead instead of an 11 O for these edges that we're working here. And so right now, all I'm doing is I'm putting 11 O in between each of the bicones as I go around it now. I'm just kind of stitching around. Let me show you what that looks like here. So we were here and I'm just adding, adding 11 O and I'm about to get to this spot. And this is a spot where we got to jet in and jet down as we go around. So I've got one more. And this is the spot where you see I'm headed kind of inward on the bead or on the design, I should say. And this is that tail thread. I'm just trying to keep that from getting in our way. So from here, don't add a bead, just come straight down through the bead that is just to the lower right of it. And back to those 11 O. And you can put an 11 O bead on either side of that, that bottom bicone. It looks kind of blocky. It reminds me a little bit of like, almost like has a square stitch look. If anyone knows into square stitching, like, um, or actually the right word would be cross stitch, I think. That's the word I'm looking for. I used to call cross stitch square stitch, and that's actually a different stitch. So I get my terminology right there. But it does kind of look like one of those little cottage stitch, uh, cross stitch patterns. To my eye, anyway. Eleven O, and we're almost done with another heart. See how fast this goes? You can make so many of these. And hearts are always in season. It does not have to be for Valentine's. So it's all done now. So from where we are here, your choice is weaving in and making it an earring, or if you wanted to do the connection. And so for connecting it. What I'm going to do is I'm just kind of weaving around now to get to one of the edges. It's going up. I chose to connect the sides and I'm going to show that, but you're not stuck connecting these parts right here, right? Let me bring the necklace back really quick. I decided that that was a good spot to connect, but you don't have to. Like you could maybe connect one corner here to the top corner of another heart. And it can be really fun to play with that and have something that's just 100% unique. And it's the same way every time. So I'm gonna show how to do that. So you can use it any way you'd like. So here's the 11 O on the side. Got my thread exiting from there. I need three more 11 O seed beads. 
So that's one way to create a connection. Um, before I do that, I want to show something to think about. If you were connecting it to another heart, remember the heart has a seed bead on it already. If you wanted to join these two right now, all you need to do is pick up an 11O, go through this 11O, pick up another 11O, and go through that one, and then they would be connected. So that's um, probably the easiest. I think that's the easiest way to connect them. So here's 11 OCB. I'm coming up the bottom, so I want to make sure that I just kind of line them up, make sure I'm going the right direction. If you want them both to have, you know, bottom and top at the same. So you see what I've done here? I've come out of one, out of the CB, gone through the other. And we're just creating another, another 11 And then back down through this one. So we just went in a circle, connecting it with two. And so this one would look like that if I was going to have that suspend as an earring. But if it was a necklace, I could put my chain here. Um, or what I did on this one was I added another little three eleven o, and I was able to get um, jump rings through that edge one and put my chain on. So there's a bunch of options there, and no matter which way you do it, it's going to work. That's the cool thing. So here's it's not reinforced. You would want to reinforce that. There's that connection there. It's still a little bit easy to pull apart. But that's how you connect them. Well, thanks, Monica. Monica says a fun class. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. So that's everything. I have um, a little bit of time left for questions, or um, I think I just missed someone asking, can I please show? Um, I missed that. With the three beads. You know what she means by that? Oh, yes, I do. Okay, yeah. Let me take this apart really quick, and I'll show you that. So that's how you connect it when you've got two hearts already made. Now let's take this one apart here. Oh, okay, the three eleven millimeter. And it looks like I just need to pull this one free. Okay, so let's set this one over here. And I lost my needle there. I've noticed sometimes when I destruct, I do end up having to take that needle off. But it's better than a knot, right? Okay, so there's that. Okay, so if you wanted to make that connection like I did with the with the chain here, like that. Exiting from this bead right here, this is the edge one, you would grab three 11 out. So one and two and three. So here's the three new ones. And then just go ahead and go through that bead. You're going to go through the same bead you're exiting, but head in the direction that the thread's not coming out. And then just pull tight. And it'll pop right into place just like that. And that's how you can build on to it in lots of ways. Like this is how you can add other elements to your design. I would reinforce it around at least one time. You know, it even looks cute just by itself. If you wanted to just add those around your, around your heart, it looks like little stars kind of. Super, super cute. And I'm going to go ahead and go through the bicone below there just to get the thread out of the way. And so you see from here, you can put a jump ring on that. Let me grab the one I had really quick. And find the seam. Wow, I closed that really well. I can't even see my seam. 
sorry about that. <laughs> it was loud. Okay. Is that where it was? Ah, now I see it. It's really hard to see. Can I spot it there at the top? Okay. And there's that lateral motion to get that jump ring open. And then I just come along and go through that side sea bead. Just want to bring it all the way through. And this is just a wiggle work harden. So with a with a jump ring, if you kind of wiggle it, it helps it stay put, right? And when you close that. So I didn't weave in my ends, so kind of ignore those, but this is one way you could start connecting to a chain. If you were to make a double heart, do you then start the original heart again? Um yeah, the easiest way I think to make a double heart would be the way I showed just before, just before we did this one, but it was where we had we had um, one eleven O, and then we connected ourselves to the other eleven O. So, for example, right here, see we're bringing these together. You would need to put an eleven O on the bottom and the top, working out of this one right here. Oh, Alexa has an interesting idea. Is there a possibility in making it Legend of Zelda themed? And she even showed a picture. Oh, doing like a Triforce. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, you can make diamond shapes very, very easily in red and glow weave using bicons. The diamond shape, um, well, I mean, honestly, you could just do it with even just those segments right there. Yeah, yeah, you can absolutely do that. And then just use that little 11 -0 trick to connect them in the right position. That'd be cute. Yeah, so um, any more questions for me about about uh, or our ideas that we can try. Anything else you guys thought of? I'm gonna bring these back out for you to see. And, um, and then I was gonna tempt you guys with next week's class if uh, there's no more questions. So let me give you guys a second. Okay, so for the double heart, you make two hearts and join them. Yes, that's what I did here. I made two. And then as I was weaving in with my second one, I just came back over here and connected them by putting an 11 out above and below. And then over here, I did that add three, right? Well, this is optional, by the way, because there's no reason you can't just come along and make a connection like this one. See how the jump ring is just coming out of that 11 out? Well, you could do that here and here, and the heart would hang differently. This is just kind of if you want it to be, um, actually, think about it if you're making your necklace collarbone length, the way that it's going to sit on the neck makes kind of a difference of where you put that jump ring. So if it's exiting from the side, it's going to be more collarbone friendly. If it's going to be long and suspended, I might want to go up here. And then you might want to reinforce a little bit so that it holds its shape there. You could even connect the hearts at the top here. And then they would, they would bend around the collar. Like say you did maybe like a nine or a dozen and connected them here, they would make a curve. And it would look like an opera, not opera link, but like an opera crystal, you know, the ones that sit on the collarbone with so much sparkle like that. Um, Is it, there a way to join two hearts, like instead of having it side by side, but have it stacked like on top? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, anywhere you have one of these little corners is a join potential. So you could say, hey, I want to connect them. I want to connect them like that. And you would just come out of one 11 -0. Add an 11 0, go into the one you want to connect, add another 11 0, and then circle through that once, maybe twice for reinforcement. And this can become any shape you want. But I think if I had a lot of time and a lot of crystals, what I might do is connect them like that and maybe do, you know, a whole necklace like that. Just like all, it would go, it would be kind of, it would start to take this shape. It would start with the two and it would kind of like go like that. And that would be really neat, wouldn't it? So that's yeah, like else. a pendant. Yeah, yeah, just like a collar, collar length necklace that would just keep going all the way around. It just would take a lot of time, but it would be really worth it. Really beautiful, really epic. Yeah. So, um, 
yeah, these are great ideas for things like, um, you know, prom and you can even do something like this for bridesmaids. It, it's a really great idea. And they also just look cool hanging next to each other on, uh, you know, if you're doing your, if you're selling in person and you have all your stuff displayed, a little cohesive display like that, have them all like out together. Yeah, so that's really fun. If you guys enjoyed this, we have another class next week. And the class next week is really fun. It's going to be something different. It's kind of be weaving intense. So there's a lot of jump aheads. There's a lot of um, variations. But um, the basic design is an easy focal. And this is a peyote stitch technique called lengthwise peyote. It's built a little differently than your average peyote stitch. It's built um, long. So you build the center first and then you build the edges. And that enables you to do a lot of really cool stuff. So um, one version I did of it is super long. Let me get that really quick. And that one came out really fun. It takes a long time. It's it's not um it's not an overnight, you know, you'll be working on this a few days, but these are faster. These you can do in a day, you know, have like a, a couple hours sitting down working on that. Um, and then there's also the potential to make them into earrings, of course. And I even put a little alternate pattern. You can see these guys are a little different. And you'll be using those wire guardians, but if you didn't want to wear a garden on the bottom, I made this version where the leaves kind of like wrap around. All these patterns and all of the um, the tips and, te and techniques are they're in the handout for next week's class. And um, I wanted to point out one thing here. The four millimeter jump rings are the same ones we're using today. So you can just take your take your same chain and your same jump rings from today's class and just bring them to next week and they'll work for next week. And that's uh, that's what we'll be doing. So there, this one will be um, kind of action packed. We're going to be working working right to the minute on that one. So <laughs> I hope to see you guys then. And we have a few other classes up if you're enjoying this one. I think um, we have our whole March series available. I'll just flash those really quick. But we've got um, the Lucky Earrings, which is um, an intro to fringe and brick stitch. So beginner friendly, really fun, and always on trend kind of style. And then um, the Chase Some Rainbows Together. This is a, not advanced, but a little bit of a beading experience will help. It's um, a variation of square and ladder stitch. And this is a herringbone pendant. It's made of herringbone stitch. And it's basically just a, a long strip of herringbone. And then you knot it and connect it and then throw a bail on it. And that's, that's all you gotta do. So all that's coming up. And so, um, yeah, I think that's all I have for, for today to show. Hopefully I'll have um, April to show pretty soon. I just finished submitting the first two classes for April already. So I feel like the year's already like half over. <laughs> but I wanna wish you guys a great weekend and um, happy beating. And if you do, um, wanna tag us, hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag John Bead so we can see the awesome things that you guys make. It always brightens my day. Happy beating you guys. <laughs>